I think some of the best reels that you look at, if you look at some of the best performing reels on the internet, they're usually like homemade videos, not like that, before you start thinking. You can't take what we do as the gold standard of anything. And just mentors aren't doing that. No, no mentors are going, what do they need? They're going, this is what I do. This is what I've done. You must do it this way. Oh, well, so-and-so doesn't do that. Well, you don't know what's going on in so-and-so's business. So you can't model yours off of that. Why you shouldn't copy us. There you go, there's a hook. Welcome, we are Dan and Mike, and we are here to talk to you about your online fitness business and help you in any way we can um, by not making sure that you don't make the same mistakes that we did when it came to building our business. Um, and our topic today is why you shouldn't copy what we're doing right now. Oh, good topic that, mate. Good topic that, mate. Hola, mate. How's it going, mate? Um, so, and then, and then, funny enough, the reason this topic is, hat, mate. It is, mate, yeah, thanks, yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't need to keep jumping in like that. Okay. All right, I'll ignore you. No, it's... <laughs> in joke. What mate. microphone is that, mate? For anyone who knows, it's an in joke. Um, so, yeah, what, where was I? Yeah, copying us. So, actually, while we're here in this podcast studio... This oh, you got the phone we... on the table, mate? <laughs> I wanted to bring it up. Oh, that's, that's mint, mate. That's mint, mate. Uh, isn't it, mate? <laughs> yeah, mate. Great, mate. In um, joke. In joke, for those that know about people that slide in your DMs. Um... Is while we're here, you know, filming this podcast, doing YouTube, and that sort of stuff, we wanted to talk about why you shouldn't copy what we're doing right now. Now, you got a podcast, mate. <laughs> it could just be, it could just be coincidence. It could just be, you know, I'm reading far too much into it, all this sort of stuff. But I've noticed that since we started doing a lot more videos like this, about, what was it, about 18 months ago now, we started doing, we, we came back on, on the YouTube. We've influenced them, aren't we? <laughs> We've influenced them. It does seem a bit weird that, like, all of a sudden, a lot of the coaches that I follow have started thinking, oh, we'll do a podcast and we'll talk like this. And, I think it's really important that, and I've said it to a lot of um, coaches on check-ins and we both said it a lot on our members' well, we both calls. Said it. We both said it. We have meetings, we both said it. Yeah. On our members' call. Where we said, don't copy what we're doing now because we're not great at some of the things that we tell you to do regularly. Yeah. Um, things like CTAs, for example, not great at them. We're not very good at them. Things like posting on our stories regularly behind the scenes, not great right now. The reasons we're not great at those right now is because we're stuff crazy well. busy. Personal stuff behind the scenes, personal stuff as well, yeah. Um, is that we're quite busy. Four with clients, a lot going on, and we need some downtime and that sort of stuff. So, how many our, clients you got, mate? Our argument, mate, is um, is that we've obviously kind of built up to that point um, where we can get away with it, for want of a better term. We can get away with not showing as much of that stuff. But not only that, when it comes to coaching coaches, which is what we do now, coaches don't need as much of that material. They probably do need more of the informational, educational, value based stuff. They will sit and watch someone doing a really boring YouTube video like this because they'll take something from it that they can learn and apply to their business. I don't believe, however, I know Mike doesn't believe as well, that many fitness coaches need to be doing a podcast like this and taking the clips and post them on Instagram because I don't think many of the general public who want fat loss are going to sit and watch a minute of you talking about why protein is important. In the same way that you listen to us talking about why Instagram stories are important or why not copying other people is important. They're just not interested in the same way that you might be. So just because it's what you watch on Instagram and what you take in doesn't mean that it's best for you and your audience. Yeah. Um, when you're right, like... Am I right, mate? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's going to backfire on me, isn't it, mate? <laughs> That's going to backfire me. Um, yeah, it has backfired me. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a case of knowing your market and knowing how your demographic digests content. I think coaches are more likely to want to learn from Instagram content. So that's why you see us posting informative reels. So if you, if you look at our content, our content does four things on Instagram I'm talking about. The four things are informative reel, funny reel, social proof, caption post. Those four things recycled. That's all we've got. If you look all the way down our page, it's always those four. And cold gems, mate. Oh, and cold DMs, mate. Well, you don't do cold DMs, <laughs> mate. Don't do cold DMs, mate. Um, no, my VA does, though. Um, but um, it's, it's those four things. Arguably, like I said, we should probably have the fifth element of personal post. I think we should probably yeah. be doing some personal posting, which we don't. But we have those four things. If you go further back to when we were doing fat loss, it sounds daft, but we didn't have the informational reel. That's the one that we removed. We didn't remove the social proof. It wasn't the funny reel that we removed. We were doing the personal stuff and we were doing the caption posts, the little tweet style, hard hitting, abrasive caption posts. 
the, inf the informative reel wasn't there. We've only added that because of what our demographic now consumes. A coach is likely to take a nugget of information and potentially apply it from Instagram. A coach is likely to sit down and watch two people over a podcast for 15, 20 minutes to try to upskill themselves. Your demographic, i.e. general population, is not on social media to learn. It's They're usually there to be engaged, entertained, um, to find something funny, thought-provoking, whatever that is. But they're not there to learn about carbs or supplements or training. They're not there to learn that. So you sitting and filming a 15, 20-minute podcast about those things, I don't know of anybody, and I could be wrong, that sits and listens to a podcast about training and nutrition on the way to work that isn't a coach. I don't know of anybody that needs to lose two stone that finds a fitness podcast and listens to it. I don't know of anybody that does that. If you are going to do a podcast, which some people probably could get away with doing a podcast, almost as backup content, but if you are going to do one, it has to be different to the norm. It can't be you talking about carbs or training. So when we did one, not, you know, by any stretch of the imagination, we're not the gold standard, but we had the biceps and banter podcast with the biceps part and the banter part. The biceps part being a rant about the industry and the banter part being the unique thing to us. So it was us reading out daily sport articles, the man who shoved 20 cream eggs up his bum, for example, and Dan reacting to it like that, laughing, you know, because it's, it's layered. It's funny like that. You know, <laughs> the you, best uh, one was the man who put popping candy in his, uh, his belly. That was the best one. Exploded. <laughs> so um, he didn't, but um, he never did it. it what about the vicar who um, was hanging up the curtains, <laughs> fell, landed on a potato? Um, they're going to they're gonna ask it to come back, mate. This is going to be a new feature in this podcast, I reckon. So if you are doing it, you do something different, but you can't do the same as everybody else um, if you are doing it. Because I do, get the, I do get the point that sometimes people, it is intimidating to sit there with a camera in your face on oh, your own. Like 100%. I get why it's easier. 100%. I think that's why coaches have started to do it more. But I just feel like the general public, what they do is they they just get on a reel and they see someone sat in front of a microphone like this and just go boring. Just bo I, I would. I would just think pretty boring straight away. Whereas if you were to, like I said, talk to a camera for 20 minutes and chop bits out of it, completely different. And how you get that information across would change a lot. And uh, and, and it's, it's just the very much like the curated professional style content is aimed more at those people, like I said, for aimed at coaches, aimed at people who want more information. I think some of the best reels that you look at, if you look at some of the best performing reels on the internet, they're usually like homemade videos, not like that, before Whoa. you start thinking. Dun, but dun, 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 they, dun. Are, <laughs> they are just raw, unedited videos that are made probably on Instagram on their stories and just uploaded. You know, you think of all those meme type videos that get posted. They're not perfectly lit. It sounds perfect with the perfect microphone and all that all expensive equipment. They're not, you know, the person who did it wasn't thinking about the best camera they can use for their content. They weren't. It was probably on a phone. It was organic. It was raw. It was passionate. It was emotional. There's, there's, a, there's this kind of like a, a hack there for you to think about that and go, actually, maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe I'm overdoing it. We need to sit here and think about this stuff because you guys are going to want something that's actually informative, somewhat mildly entertaining. Uh, in it, mate? That's what it's all about. In jokes, yeah, insane, mate. stuff like that, you know, stuff like that. And it... We don't do the bulk of our content this way either. This is only a small part of our content that we have going forward. And, and again, when we do have more time, we'll do loads more funny stuff. Promise. Even Promise. more of that. Even more of that. Um, but I think it's just really important that you remember that. But also alongside that is, is not to copy us and how we do other things as well. Like we don't do enough calls to action. Why don't we do enough calls to action? Because we're full with clients. So like we can work on a quite a, a normal basis, just speaking to people few people inquire, it's cool. We're not pushing for clients. We don't, don't need them. But if you're sat there with 10 clients, you're like, oh, I don't really know whether to do CT. I don't know. It looks a bit pushy or not. Oh, I know it's you guys don't really do them. So what? doesn't matter so what So what do. if we don't do them? Like, doesn't mean you shouldn't do them. Same with the, with the, in the members calls. We, we go over this with Instagram stories, don't we, all the time. It's like, we're not great at showing the behind the scenes of our coaching, what we're doing, how we help someone, how we do this stuff, because we're busy. Like, our days are full on. It's not something that enters our mind. But if I was there with 10 clients, I wanted clients, I wanted to show off what I was doing more, you bet I would be doing it more. It's just that thing that I think people have fallen into this trap of going, oh, they do it like that, so I'll just copy them. Yeah. Um, you can't take what we do um, as the gold standard of anything because we 
we don't necessarily do anything that well. But also as well, it's also because what built us our business isn't what's helping us sustain our business. So it's like all the other mentors that now preach about doing things that they never did to build their business. I'm like, well, how can you, how can you practice that and, and talk about that with your, with your coaches that have signed and paid you money to build a business? We go through and we go, well, this is what we did and we built our business and it still works. We know it still works because the coaches we're working with are doing that. What I wouldn't suggest is copying what we're doing now. Like you coaches shouldn't have a low cost members group. You just shouldn't do it. Not in a million years should do that. But we're doing it. So does that mean it's wrong or right? Well, it's right for, for, for us and it's wrong for you. The, the problem is, is that in mentoring, there's no context behind anything. Everybody, every mentor has their way of doing things. Um, and it's, I liken it to back in the day, there was um, high carb zealots, low carb zealots, keto zealots, whatever. Um, there was the, the people that were anti-sweetener. Then there was the people that, uh, or everybody that was, um, if it fits your macros, sorry, it was one or the other, black or white. And that's how it is at the moment with mentoring. It's you go in and you know exactly what each mentor does specifically with all of their clients. I can tell you which mentor they've come from based off their content. I can guess. I do it on consultation calls. And they're like, yeah, I'm in another mentorship or I've been in another mentorship. And I'll go, I bet it's that one. Yeah, how do you know? Because of your content. Because they do the same thing. Mentoring should be context dependent because every single person's business is different. The reason why it's different is because every single person will market to a different demographic and every different person behind the business has got different values, morals, opinions. So for one person, one person maybe would do well with the VA. Somebody else might not be able to manage those people. Some, person, some people in their business might need a contract. Other people might not need a contract. Other people might need to charge up front. Other people might need to charge recurring. Other people should do a podcast, have a members group. Other people shouldn't. It's con context dependent, dependent on the business, dependent on the demographic. So having a blanket, should I be doing this, is not the right question to be asking. So when you say, but you don't do that, yet yeah, we don't do that because of where we're at and who we market to and where our business is at. Just like one of our clients might use a type form application because they're getting 20 people book a call a month. You're getting two people book a call a month. You shouldn't be using a type form application. It's context dependent, yet coaches look for the ideal way, the ideal template. Oh, well, so-and-so doesn't do that. Well, you don't know what's going on in so-and-so's business. So you can't model yours off of that. It's completely different. And that's the thing that is, it's lost in, in the social media kind of, I suppose, trying to grab attention from people and that sort of stuff, but it is lost in that. And I think that a lot of people sign up with maybe a mentor, they sign up with someone thinking that, oh, when I get in there, it won't just be like that. And it's like, no, it is. That's just all they say. And that's their soundbite. And that's just what they stick to and they can't change and they can't alter it. And then, and then like Alex Holmes brings out a book and all of a sudden they change everything. Um, funny that, isn't it? It's a bit weird, but, um, but yeah, that's, 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 I think a really important point is that just like when you have a client and you might go, right, well, this client's on you know, 2000 calories and so is this one, but one might be low carb because they've got type two diabetes. One might be, they've got higher carb. Again, it could be on the same number of calories, could have a similar goal, but there's different ways of doing it. It's the same thing about the principles and methods. The principle of weight loss and fat loss is calorie deficit. And that's what you all shout at people on Instagram. But the print, the, the methods to do that, there's, there's loads of them and each client has a different thing and you don't marry yourself to one of those methods. You just have your system maybe that you, you work with people and you work with them on a, a client first kind of principle. You go, well, what do they need? And just mentors aren't doing that. No, no mentors are going, what do they need? They're going, this is what I do. This is what I've done. You must do it this way. And they are, like you said, the, the equivalent of those people that just shout low carb. They go, I'm on carnivore diets. Everyone must go on carnivore diets. Like, well, no, just because it helped you doesn't mean it helps everyone else. So let's use an analogy. It's like your clients, um, you've got client A and client B. Client A is... In fact, let's just use names because it's going to be easy to remember. Let's say you've got Dave and Steve. Dave is six stone overweight, uh, wanting to lose weight. Not particularly um, fantastic genetics. Um, very sedentary job. Then you've got Steve, already in shape, got a six pack. Dave is on 1,500 calories to try to lose weight because he's very sedentary, no time to exercise, 1,500 calories. Steve maintaining his six pack on two and a half thousand calories. That's like Dave looking at Steve going, but he's on two and a half thousand calories and well, he's got a six pack. So sh shouldn't I be doing what he's doing? How come Steve can eat that amount of food and I'm only on 1500? That's what coaches are doing. They're looking at Steve going, well, that's what they're doing. So that's what I need to do. 
No, it's not. It's not at all. Because it's, it's not right for you with where you're at. So we don't do the things that we need to do to grow because we don't need to grow. We are growing naturally over time because of the results that are coming through, the ability to increase um, our prices, and the fact that more and more eyes are getting on the page and more and more social proofs going out. If we were struggling for clients, we would do the things we would need to do to grow. You're in a different position to us, no doubt, because you're probably wanting people through the door. So you need to act differently. And the people that want to come through your door are different to the people that want to come through our door. So they need to be given a different thing to get them through the door. Simple. Correct. So there you go. That's that video. Short and sweet, that one. Is it? How long was that, mate? How long was that, mate? Long enough, mate. Too long, mate. If anything. I'm doing a podcast, mate. Playing golf, mate. Um, if you want to know what that private joke's all about, just message one of us. I'm sure I'll tell you if you feel like you're missing out. But um, the other thing as well, just on that, is that we actually put together a video similar to this one where we went over the eight things that you must have within your online fitness business in order to grow and be successful. Not copying other people is probably one of them. I can't remember ex exactly what all eight were. But the other seven, if you want them, just make sure that you message one of us on Instagram. The word is one word, BB8, like the, uh, the droid in Star Wars. Mike doesn't know Star Wars, but... BB8, if you send us that, you'll get our brand new video that we've launched. If you're in the members group already, you already have it, right? So don't go messaging us that. You, the amount of you that have done that, silly. It's in the members group already, you'll get it. But if you haven't had that from us or you're not in the members group, BB8, send it to one of us and you'll get that video straight away because it's automated rather than a VA sending it. Easier, isn't it, mate? Subscribe, mate. Subscribe.